Often a depressive episode starts with a cue or trigger. This could be a thought, emotion, behavior, situation, or life event, like a personal injury or divorce. This cue or trigger is then usually followed by a thought, emotion, sensation, or behavior, which sets what's called a depression loop in motion. So let's take a deeper look at that for a second. A depression loop can look something like this, and it has four possible entry points. After a cue or trigger, you may begin to think negative thoughts. You may begin to question your worth or start to spin stories about what just happened. You might begin anxiously ruminating or worrying about the future. These negative thoughts can then lead you to feel certain emotions. You may feel sad, anxious, or unloved, or maybe even angry or vengeful. In response to these emotions, you might start to feel some things in your body. You might get a stomachache or a headache, or you may start to sweat or lose your appetite or have trouble breathing or even sleeping. And then these thoughts, feelings, and sensations may lead you to make unhealthy choices in your behavior. Maybe you turn to drinking or drugs, or you lash out at those around you, or maybe you isolate yourself from friends or loved ones. Once started, this loop can then continue until you feel depressed and miserable. Let's look at an example. The depression loop can start from any of the four places, really, depending on your cue or trigger. For this example, let's say you have a bad night of sleep. This would be your cue or trigger. Not sleeping then causes you to feel fatigued during the day. This is a sensation. This sensation might lead you to drink more coffee during the day, which is a behavior. The caffeine makes your heart race, and you start to worry if maybe you'll have trouble sleeping tonight. These are thoughts. Thinking about whether or not you'll be able to sleep tonight makes you feel anxious. This is an emotion. The feeling of anxiety and the negative thoughts make it hard for you to sleep when you get home that night. This then leads to you feeling tired the next day. And this is how the depression loop can spiral into a depressive episode. In this section of the course, you'll explore your own depression triggers and cues. A good way to start fighting depression is to learn to recognize your triggers and cues. A depression cue or trigger is just something that can start the negative spiral toward a depressive episode. In this section, you'll be writing your cues down on paper. By writing your cues down on paper, you cement them in your memory, which may make it easier for you to recognize them as you go throughout your day. By becoming familiar with your depression cues and triggers, you increase your chances of catching them before it turns into depression. Some depression cues are obvious, like the death of a loved one, a breakup, failing a class, or a health problem. Others are less obvious, like a disagreement with a friend, making an embarrassing mistake, or even visiting home for the holidays. Using the depression triggers chart in your workbook, start to fill in the blanks as you come up with your depression cues. To figure this out, you may want to start to ask yourself a few questions. Like, how do I know when a depressive episode is coming on? Do I isolate myself from my friends and family? Do I start sleeping too much? Do I lose my appetite? Do you have more body aches and pains? Or feel more fatigued? Or cry or feel sad more often? Filling in this chart might take some time. It's not always easy to figure out exactly what our cues are. What you may need to do is a little bit of reverse engineering. If you notice a thought, emotion, sensation, or behavior that you often do when you're depressed, make a note of that and then try and think back and see if you can find where it originated. So maybe you notice that you have just sat down in front of the TV with a pint of Ben & Jerry's. Not necessarily a problem, but if this is something you tend to do when you're feeling depressed, it might warrant further investigation. You can try to trace this event back to its corresponding trigger. So you look back and remember that as you were opening the freezer, you felt an anxious, sort of nervous pit in your stomach that ice cream can sometimes soothe. Okay, so that's your sensation. Why the pit in your stomach? Were you feeling sad, unimportant, or unloved? Now, why were you feeling that way? Well, if you look back a little further, you remember all of the negative thoughts you had while you were driving home from work. You spent your whole commute home worrying about your job performance, whether you were the right fit, or whether your coworkers even liked you. Trace that back a little further. Why were you having those negative thoughts? Well, think back and your boss gave you some negative criticism on a project that you handed in today. Bam, there's your trigger. So going from the ice cream all the way to the trigger is not always super clear, but if you take some time to look at it, you, it'll become easier to understand. So then once you've identified that trigger, 
write it down in your workbook along with the associated emotions, sensations, behaviors, and thoughts. Keep this table nearby where you can refer to it regularly. So when you notice something, you have the opportunity to write it down right away before you forget. The more you do this, the easier it will get, and you'll have a chance to address your triggers before they turn into depression.